Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, we go through all the new third party reveals shown at TFCon Los Angeles last weekend. Today is Wednesday, March 30th, 2019, and this is episode 321 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that had our parents bribe our way into Transformers University. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team, Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, what's happening? Let's talk Transformers. As we record this, it's still it's the end of TFCon LA weekend. Uh, Yoshi's still there, so uh, he's having fun. We, but we're having our own fun here. So, of course, mm-hmm. uh, on, <laughs> before before we get into that fun, I do have to bring it down a little bit, just because we got some. We did get some sad news this weekend. I won't make Jeremy, Jeremy read. No, I won't make. <laughs> I won't make Jeremy read it this time. Uh, <laughs> I, I have been since I heard the news. I just feel like, well, I know Charles is going to make me do this. <laughs> All right, go ahead then, Jeremy. <laughs> I don't know how you get me every time. <laughs> okay. Well, the sad news this weekend was uh, Beast Wars writer and editor Larry Dottilio passed away. He did much more than Beast Wars. He worked on everything from He-Man to Babylon 5. Uh, there was a long um, Facebook post from J. Michael Straczynski talking about him because they were um, they were friends all the way back from the He-Man days. I mean, he he did so much, and Beast Wars was such a well-written show. And you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of that goes to to his work. So, you know, he will definitely be missed. Apparently, he had a long illness. Um, he just passed away from that. Yeah, it's. It, I, I think it's. I don't think it's a, an overstatement to say that that Beast Wars was a was a really big turning point for the Transformers franchise and mm-hmm. really had a big influence on uh, on Transformers going forward. So, uh, you know, they, he, he made a really big contribution to Transformers and uh, lots of other things. So I'm sure, uh, you know, con- all condolences to his family and I'm sure lots of people will miss him. All right. Well, uh, let's let's uh, bring the mood back up. Uh, as always, we want to uh, recognize all of our supporters, the people who give us money, all our Donatrions uh, on PayPal and Patreon. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope the, all the ones who were at TFCon got a chance to hang out with Yoshi. Sounds like uh, had a lot of fun, and then uh, a couple guys actually helped Yoshi out. Uh, I think Yoshi wanted a, a shout-out specifically to Gay and uh, JJ so uh, you guys are awesome thank you for thank you for all the help uh, also number one Derek was there he's always uh, you know he's he's becoming one of our number one supporters so thanks number one Derek it, didn't he say one Jeopardy did he I didn't hear that oh that's great I, I think he said one Jeopardy it proves that we have the smartest audience <laughs> out of all the Transformers podcasts awesome uh, and if you would like to uh, join the hallowed ranks of don- of our Donatrions, all you got to do is go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support, and that's where you'll find links to sign up. Uh, of course, uh, if you don't want to do that, you can go to our merchandise store. Go to transmissionspodcast.com slash shop, and that's where you will see uh, lots of our merchandise from Public. You can also get all the shirts uh, at Tee Public uh, from our store, and then we get a little bonus. Also, uh, our good friend K Girl, she has a store up now, doesn't she? Yeah. So you can check out some of her items. Uh, we'll put the link in the show notes because I don't have it handy. Yep. And K Girl's listening right now. Sorry, K Girl. <laughs> we will definitely link it for you. <laughs> and, and we also have one of her shirts linked super in our stark. store. Yeah, super. St- Superstar K is her name, and she did uh, Optimus Prime with our logo that we've added to our store, but she has a number of other designs up, so check it out. Cool. Yeah, so uh, lots of good ways to support the show and support our good friend K-Girl. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get into the toys this week. And I think it's... Uh, 
you know, it was a big TFCon weekend, so we're just going to jump right in and talk about all the stuff that was going on at TFCon. I think that's enough to, to fill the whole toy section. So, Daryl, uh, will, you, will you take us through this journey? Will I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the right answer was, was yes. Thanks, thanks for listening. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that was done through the third party panel. A lot of it we've seen before. There were some nice uh, little pieces that uh, we've we've yet to see some add ons, um, some stuff from non F that we'd never seen before. Uh, non F does some really great stuff. Uh, if you haven't heard our interview with non F, uh, you can take a look at that. That was a long time ago, but uh, yeah. I'm sure a lot of it still applies. Um, He's got uh, uh, an add-on kit being done for Siege Hound, an add-on kit for Siege Shockwave, and an add-on kit for Siege Sideswipe. Uh, so take a look at those if you have those figures and are like, it needs a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming out that's new from New Age. They're that company that uh, kind of won unofficially kind of one best toy at TFCon a couple of years ago uh, in Canada with the uh, New Age Bumblebee, the kind of super tiny legend scale Bumblebee that transforms really, really well. Um, so they're, they have a, a picture of that in just a group shot here too. That's right. So they've got a couple other figures coming out. Uh, the, the first one is uh, Jazz, and it looks really articulate. So... Uh, if you're a fan of jazz, uh, you know, you're going to have to take a look at this here. And obviously they've got a couple of repaints here. They've got uh, Stepper or uh, um, Meister, if you uh, want to go uh, the other name. Uh, and they repainted them purple and put the Shockwave head on them and turned them into Shockwave. So uh, that's kind of fun. Um, and then obviously, like uh, Jeremy said, there's that group shot. But they've also got the uh, the Prowl uh, version of it. Uh, uh, a, a prowl version coming out with um i think we've seen this before we were talking before the show so i think this one might be old news but then they've also got a uh, uh iron hide and a ratchet coming as well um so that's kind of fun we we speculate maybe the names were swapped on this slide because they have the iron hide named mccoy and the ratchet named miller and it just seems to me like why is ratchet not named mccoy so he's an ambulance not a doctor a what mm -hmm. An ambulance. I don't know what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new company coming out called Banana Force. Uh, it's a great name. Um, and uh, they are working on a metal premium line. And it looks like their first figure is going to be RID Optimus Prime. Uh, their, big, um, their big thing they're going for here is alloy joints and hi a highly movable design. They've also they've showed a skeletal version of the inside of this uh, Optimus. It's it looks very detailed. Um, also, they go on and they show that there's going to be a like a, a great armor piece coming out. So it's going to combine. So you're going to get your. Well, they're going to have the the Ultra Magnus. They're going to get the Ultra Magnus, and they're going to go together. The Optimus and the Ultra Magnus are going to go together. So. I, there's no pricing on any of this stuff yet, so just be on the lookout if that's one of your, you know, your favorite designs. You're going to get the opportunity to go after a, uh, a really highly articulated, you know, premium scale. I hope they also get the rubber tires that don't crack. Hope so. It doesn't say anything <laughs> on here about rubber tires, but yeah. And if they have a metal frame, they're going to splurge for the rubber tires. I hope so. So jumping back to Zeta Toys, the one thing that uh, kind of... From what I understood from we reading tweets and, and, and in the in the Discord server uh, through the weekend was that uh, this kind of really, you know, got people's attention. It looks like Zeta Toys is doing a Raiden combiner. And if you don't know who Raiden is, he's the train combiner from G1, from Japanese G G1. So it never came over to the uh, the Western uh, market here, North America. Uh, so you weren't able to really buy the figure unless you kind of had it imported or you knew somebody that was able to get it for you and bring it over. But this is a figure that is, uh, as the G1 version goes, very hard to get complete. But it looks like they're they're going to do a, um, I'm assuming, masterpiece scale. Uh, it's It looks pretty big, but uh, we really don't have any size comparisons here. 
Um, what we do have from Zeta Toys is we do have now a color scan of their Beast King combiner, which is their Preda King, and it looks pretty damn cool. So it's again, it's still in CAD form. We really don't have any kind of prototypes from it, but it still looks pretty good. Um, again, I would assume that it's uh, mass rescale. We do have some more detailed, uh, you know, uh, CGI modeling for a movie style Bumblebee. Bumblebee the movie. Bumblebee. It looks pretty good. So that's that's coming out. But we also get some looks at their uh, Bruticus and their Superion full combiners. So that's pretty awesome to take a look at those and see. So I have a question about this. Go nuts. They're calling it Bruticon. Is that just their name for both sets? Or because they're Scrambled City, you can just have mix and match? I don't know, Jeremy. I don't know. You sh- you need to know these things. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it could. The other one could be Supericon. Um, S- Supericus. But, but yeah, so... It, uh, it there is no it doesn't appear to be a name for the Superion one, but a Bruticon does appear to be the name of the Bruticus. Uh, it looks pretty good, very G one accurate. Superion the same. It's not the only Bruticus in this uh, in this pack of pictures though. Uh, moving on, the next one is from Fans Toys, and they start off right into their Superion. So this is Fans Toys' first combiner. If you don't count uh, Spotter, their uh, reflector. So this is their first actual giant robot combiner. And it looks pretty good as uh, Superion, you know. There's a lot of different uh, angles that they have taken from him. They have two different faces. Uh, one as a, um, like a cartoon version with the mouth plate. And then one with uh, with the mouth. So if you want to call them the comic book version or a toy version. I think the toy version had a mouth plate too, though. Yeah. The comic book version had a mouth plate too, so. It did? So. Yeah. Maybe it's just the, uh, I don't know, which one didn't have, which one had the mouth then? They label it OX. I don't know what OX means. (laughs) Original example. (laughs) Mm, Ox. Anyway. Uh, either way, so there's two there's two versions of it. Then they move on to another uh, slide and show that they're going to also be doing a Menasaur. And uh, I think this is another one that they're kind of working on hand in hand with their Superion here. Both going to be the same height, which makes sense. And it's going to have two different uh, abilities to kind of one to match the animation model and then one to match the toy model as far as the upper shoulders uh, and the head go. So depending on which one you want to go with, uh, the chest and the the shoulders and head kind of can be changed out. Also, the legs are are flipped around too. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, that makes sense then too. Uh, So yeah, those are some pretty cool differences between the two uh, Menasaurs. I don't know. Personally, I think I'd probably want the the toy version. The the cartoon version's cool, but the toy version kind of... Looks better to me. Um, we do have individual prototype images of these, uh, some some uh, Stunticon members, a uh, drag strip, uh, which is always a really cool uh, figure because of the dual uh, front, the two front wheels on this uh, dragster or the, the F1 car. It's uh, it's really cool. And they've got a guy in the seat in this one. So it's uh, it's kind of it's different than all the others where there's no there's no driver but this one has a driver. And it does appear that there's going to be rubber tires on these ones. Also, they do seem to have a, uh, a fairly advanced prototype of Motormaster, so he basically looks like he's done, um, fully chromed, painted, and ready to go. So he, I assume he's further along than the aerial bots are either. And then you've got um, what I assume is, uh, it appears to be Dead End. Yeah, so uh, Drag Strip, Dead End, and Motormaster appear to be the ones that are they're working on right now. It looks like the Motormaster is like that Transform Mission Motormaster where the robot is just the cab, and I don't know, I guess the maybe the combiner pieces are in the trailer? Yeah, makes sense. He also mm-hmm. looks like he's got rubber tires as well, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Also from Fans Toys, they are working on some mini-bots. And the first one on the list here is a Warpath. 
and this is in full prototype form and you can actually tell the spots where they're using die cast because you can tell the uh where the the metal is on the figure and that's pretty cool this guy's gonna have quite a bit of die cast in him so he i expect him to be very heavy yeah and then we see that they're also going to do a brawn and there's also a ton of die cast in him as well he looks really animation accurate so that's pretty cool uh, and a uh, a beachcomber. Not as much uh, die cast in him, but still still a bunch in the legs. Well, in in the cage. Oh yeah, yeah. And then uh, probably the one that mi- that wins funniest name of the uh, the convention is uh, Fans Toys uh, FT44. Their Astro Train. They're calling it Thomas. <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is all just prototypes and. Uh, uh, kind of CG models, but uh, he he looks really good, really detailed in train mode. Um, you're getting like individual wheels and spokes and stuff designed into the thing. Uh, that's really cool. What I think is really neat about this is the the base it comes with. Yes, like it's it's like a <laughs> section of train track that you can also make into something that'll hold up the shuttle, mm-hmm. like a flight stand. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really ingenious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also like how his chest can be both cartoon and toy versions. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to choose between one company and another. Yeah. Yeah, so he's pretty awesome. Moving on to Planet X, we get a uh, Deathsaurus, which uh, is a figure that's kind of, it's thrown curveballs at the companies the last couple of years because some companies have tried it and I don't think they've done as well as they'd like to. Uh, this Planet X one looks pretty good. A nice, uh, a nice head sculpt with uh, some crazy wings, and uh, it's I. Planet X's deal is that they've been doing the the war for and the uh, fall of Cybertron look, right? That's been their shtick. But uh, this is a a weird chicken dragon guy, you know. It's mm-hmm. uh, with a robot, you know, you know, inside, but. Uh, it really, I mean, if I had to say, does it fit into that uh, that aesthetic? I would say no. It, you know, it's it's its own thing. You know, it's kind of kooky. It's you know, it's a little wa- weird and wild. The way it, it's it's blockyish to resemble G one. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that it's closer to that than the the game look. Yeah, but I like it. It looks good. It looks like it should be Japanese, and it it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty cool. And they've also added in another figure into that old aesthetic of the game, which is their Ironhide. And it uh, it definitely fits into that old aesthetic. And they're they're showing off that they are still, still working on a uh, Star Saber as well. And it will look like it to be a Brain Master. Or at least he's got the little guy. I don't know if he's going to actually be a working Brain Master. But their last... Um, their last panel for their their uh, company does show that they do have a a couple f- uh, another figure here that's going to form. It's a uh, what is he? Leo, Victory Leo, Victory Leo. Yeah, so Victory Leo is going to be there, uh, and so you're likely going to get a, uh, a Victory Saber. And uh, let's see yeah, I mean they on. they show the silhouette of him combining. Exactly. So yeah, definitely going to get a Victory Saber. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think we got anything new from fans hobby. Uh, basically a recolor of something they already made. Well, maybe not. No, we've got this uh, Athena, um, which uh, is, uh, I think it's, uh, what is her name? Uh, Uh, Minerva. Minerva, that's right. Coming with a small little figure that goes inside in alt mode. It got a lot of attention because of the Minerva, like the headmaster is huge. Well, and she is a headmaster. Of course, yeah. The, The pilot is a headmaster. Oh, is it? That is the headmaster yeah. then. Okay, that's cool. The, like a couple slides over. Okay, so that's why it uh, it makes sense why it's so big. It it looks odd because the 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 figure is a uh, it's a female character, so the the figure is slimmed down a little, but the head is larger than the body. You know would would give it credit for, but uh, that's cool. A Minerva figure. And she has the little chest indicators like the classic head headmasters. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can easily repaint that into a night beat. <laughs> well, uh, well, you could redesign it into a night beat. I think, like I said before, with the, the figure being uh, slimmer for a female character, it's it, you wouldn't want a night beat to be that slim. 
But Nightbeat was a Nightbeat was a repaint of Minerva in G one. So uh, yes, I yeah. But he, he's I saying agree. this particular figure they have given female proportions. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Um, Night Nightbeat's a wiry guy. I'm reaching here. His, <laughs> turn, turn off his mic, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a couple other things they just show from uh, from fans hobby is that they're they're working on uh, uh, there's a lot of silhouettes going on here, but the one that I kind of got drawn to is the one that shows that they're basically building the Armada Prime and it's gonna be with all the fucking shit. Sorry, I swore, <laughs> but they're building all the crazy crap that Armada Prime had. They're got, they've got the Prime with the truck and the trailer. Okay, cool. That was pretty big. They've got the, they've got overload, the the really tiny truck that pulled the obscurely large, like the crazy, ridiculously large trailer that had no business being pulled by the tiny little truck. And they're also gonna do the space shuttle that was held on that crazy. Yeah, the jet fire that was held on that crazy large trailer that all of that crazy crap combines into the, the super mode of the Armada Prime. The jet fire is a whole nother figure, so hopefully that also turns is. into a robot. Yeah, I'm assuming it does. So does Overload, right? So yeah. you've got yeah. three figures that will all combine into this one humongous crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's it's I have the original figure and it's a it's just it's in its in its craziness there's beauty. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it just keeps going up. It's like it's so tall, but they just keep building on more guns. So yeah, I love that the, they're doing it and it's all just silhouettes and nothing is realized yet, but hey, keep your eyes open. Mastermind Creations the only thing on this page for them is the Supermax uh, crowdfund. And as of right now, with three days left, they're at 459 of their 800 goal. Mm, TFCon did not help. This is not looking great. Uh, if you are interested in this thing, by the time this comes out, you're likely going to have that day. You're going to have Wednesday to do it, so... You might want to get on it and, and make it happen, but it's really not, it's not looking good. That's unfortunate. I know there's a lot of people out there that are interested in it. I did not get into it. I spent way too much uh, this weekend, so I didn't really have a chance to do it, but I guess it wouldn't be taking my money right away, would it? But yeah, whatever. I know that they extended it into TFCon because they thought it was, it was going to, TFCon would be a much bigger audience that they could promote it at and, and hopefully get the, the last bit, the last little hurdle to jump and, and get on their way to the finish, but it doesn't appear to have worked. Uh, that's unfortunate and I'm, I'm sad for them. The Before I leave uh, Mastermind Creations, I just want to say that they did end off their, their, um, their slides with pictures of their version of the DJD. Uh, we have no new pictures of the actual DJD members, but we do have a new picture of Nickel and the Spark Eater. So they look like to be the next thing coming out. Uh, a couple new little figures there to add to your DJD shelf. Uh, Ocular Max, we've seen all this before. This is the other Bruticus that we I was talking about earlier. This is the one where the, every each individual limb figure has the integrated hand or foot necessary for that component. Um, it's a very cool idea and uh, something that uh, takes away from the parts mm. former aspect of the combiner. So if that's something you're interested in, take a look at that. There is an animation that you can take a look at as well. Um, this has been seen before, but uh, uh, take a look. They're also uh, selling, going to sell a cage for their Jaguar, their Ravage that uh, that they came out with a little while ago. This is just a it's just a cage that uh, you can put Ravage in. And onto the I guess it's this was new from uh, Ocular Max. It's their Unlimited series, and this is interesting because we we just found out recently that that Hasbro is coming out with their own version of this. So this is. They're calling uh, Mastermind Create or Ocular Max is calling it Stellaris Prominion, and this is the Optimus Prime. I don't know what the actual Star name. Star Convoy. 
Is it Star Convoy? That's the actual name? Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure. So it's Star Convoy. Um, and it's a gorgeous figure. I've always loved the design of it. But, yeah, we just learned that that Hasbro is putting a Star Convoy in Siege. So that's unfortunate news for Ocular Max. But uh, it's a cool-looking figure, i got to say. But that brings us to the end of the slides here, guys. Anything that stuck out to you? Anything you want to comment on a little bit more? But R.I.D. Optimus Prime is just from that Banana is so my jam. Yeah. Yeah. That is on my I, I really, really want it list. That's a that's a I don't care what it costs, I'm getting it list? Mm. It, it's uh, depending on how much it costs, I'm going to probably save up for it. Unless it's just an obscene amount because of all the metal in there. Wow. And that was Star Convoy. The Death Saurus uh, looked pretty cool to me. I mean, Space Chicken is always cool. All right. It's something we don't see every day. Yeah. Something unique. No, they're definitely running out of, of original G1 designs, the ones that you got in the original show from, from over here in North America. So they're, they're, they're reaching out into the obscure Japanese or European designs. So mm -hmm. you're getting some different ones here that have a maybe a smaller fan base, but nonetheless, uh, they're awesome designs. And the the new age uh, jazz figures, I, 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 for some reason that um, the shockwave jazz is just really <laughs> looks looks interesting why? to me. I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know why they did that, but <laughs> interesting like I kind of want it, or interesting like why does it exist? I mean, like I'd like to look at it and mess around with it. Probably wouldn't buy it, <laughs> but you like was, purple, was, don't you? Was Shockwave um was that a was Shockwave a car for uh like Bimal Tech or Alter Yeah, yeah. probably. Yes. Yeah. yes, he was. And he was a he was a Mazda six. So it's not a exact Mazda? Yes. So it's not exactly a Porsche, but it kinda ends up looking the same way. Mm hmm This kinda matches the add on set that you could get. I can't remember the company that sold it, I but I did get it. But you were able to take your special ops jazz from uh, Hasbro and swap the heads, put a shockwave head on it, put a little gun arm on it, and you could paint it up however you wanted to. But it did come with some stickers that you could throw on. But, uh, yeah, I did it. I painted mine purple and uh, threw the gun arm on, the head on, and it looked okay. But, yeah, it turned uh, the, the Porsche purple. So I will also say those fans toys mini bots with all the die cast in it, that really looks neat. Yeah. Again, I don't know how much the metal is going to add to the cost, but mm -hmm. it's neat seeing it in these figures, especially where you can see just like so clearly where it's going to be. Yeah. I do like the um, the Warpath design. I have their sea spray, and I remember it costing me 60 bucks US. So I would imagine that that's probably going to be the price of what Braun and Beachcomber are. I think probably maybe 10 bucks more for Warpath. I would like, I would hope that they'd be the same, but you can physically see he's bigger. Um, so yeah. I wouldn't expect them to sell it for less, but I would hope, though, that it would be not too much more. But I, I, I agree with you. I, I like that uh, Warpath a lot, though. Mm -hmm. I think I like the, uh, the, the Thomas the best out of this one. The name is great, which, I mean, yeah. who cares about the name at the, after, at the end of the day? But... That train mode it just looks like so much detail is put into those those wheels. And not that I'd ever really keep it in train mode, but I just like knowing that I could put it there, stick it on a track, and just look at it and be like, that looks like a freaking train, man. Like, that's that really looks like a train. Well, and just the, the track accessory itself. I mean, that would of just... Of course, yeah. You know, I, I would like to see just more accessories like that where mm -hmm. creative ways to display your toys. Mm-hmm. Right on. Well, uh, that's it for the uh, the third party panel, Charles. Uh, I did want to mention because we did see uh, that we there, there was one exclusive that was announced after we recorded last week's show, and we got a we got a nice picture that Make Toys, I guess G two yeah G two Star Scream Screamer uh, repaint, and then Yoshi got that nice picture of Aaron uh, holding his holding the one he got. Yeah, it's huge. That's a really uh it looks nice. Uh, yeah, and 
check out lots of other pictures on our on our Twitter page from Yoshi. I guess he is he po- he's posting the Instagram too, isn't he? So I, I believe so. so. Yep. Yeah. So lots of pictures from TFCon. I'm sure when, when uh, on the next time we get Yoshi back on the show, he'll be able to to give us a full accounting of his TFCon adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess that is all uh, the toy topics. Uh, it was uh, all TFCon all weekend. So let's uh, move on to some trips to the store. And this is where we show off all the awesome Transformers stuff we got this week. We do this as a video that you can see on YouTube. And you can see us show off all our purchases in beautiful high definition. But uh, you can also listen right now. Keep listening to the podcast. You can listen uh, to us describe everything in loving detail as we keep talking. So without further ado, trips to the store. Uh, All right. So uh, let's do what we came here to do and talk about all the stuff we got this week. And I didn't pick an order going forward, so I'm just going to pick on Jeremy. It's just a comic week for me uh, with a new series starting up. I had gotten a bunch of the the covers, but I'm going to start off. I finally um, remembered to bring my... Star Trek versus Transformers number five, cover A. Finishing out, I guess, the, the the old phase of the Transformers stuff, and now we have a bold new era. The first uh, cover I got is cover A. Um, I cannot remember who did these. Um, it's Rodriguez. Gabriel Rodriguez. Oh, okay. Gabriel Rodriguez. This is what you see in a lot of the promo art. It's nice. <clears throat> it does look at places like Megatron has fingerprints on them. The shading they did. And then this one is... Um, That's Angel Hernandez, the uh, Angel interior Hernandez. artist. This yeah. one? Yeah, so yep. this is nice. You get rubble in the front and then more well-known characters in the back. And then and finally, what? Uh, it was Colors by Joanna LaFuente. Ah. And then finally, the um, I was actually tempted to pull Shelton, at least for what, <laughs> what was available in the comic book store because there's so many convention exclusives but uh i didn't really like rib but i got ria by casey collar and josh bertram uh this is one of my favorites of the bunch i'm happy to have picked that up one last thing came in this week and this is for uh this coming weekend uh, i will be at c2e2 in chicago as press which is cool i already have a couple interviews lined up I don't know if I will be able to match what Daryl was able to do at Toronto Comic Con, but hey, I'm I'm gonna get to to meet the Animaniacs cast for a photo op. So even if I don't get to interview them, you gotta set the bar somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's all I got this week, and I'm sure I'll have more next week after the con. Rob Paulson was on Transformers. He, he was, was and, and Jess Harnell. Yeah, he was in the live action movie. So I'm gonna That's try true. to I'm gonna try to get something with them, but I I'm not optimistic because you know they are you know pretty high up there. Next level. <laughs> yeah. But just the the fact that I you know finally I decided I'm gonna splurge for the photo op with um them, Trust McNeil, and Maurice LaMarche. And then I'm gonna you know get some autographs, which since they're not comic creators, they're not free. But I think it's like 30 bucks or something. Next week, I'm going to have a lot of fun stuff. And I, I guarantee not all Transformers are there. Oh, nice. we can do that? You can do that this week? <laughs> well, according to Vangelis, I'm, I'm you know, the guy in charge of the podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I have to dispute that. <laughs> Listen to the TFCon podcast, family. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess I will go next because I have pretty much the same stuff that Jeremy has, except less. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I also got Transformers number one. I got the Gabriel Rodriguez cover, cover A, the Angel Hernandez cover, cover B, and uh, the Casey Collar retailer incentive cover, and. That's it. I do not have a press pass to C2E2, sadly, but lots of Transformers comics goodness. Uh, I am excited for the new Transformers series, so I'm, I'm, I hope they keep to their schedule so that we get a new book next week, but we'll see. 
but I'm looking forward to it. All right. Uh, throw it to you, Daryl. What do you got? Well, uh, I got uh, the first three or the first issue of the Transformers comic. <laughs> uh, I've got uh, this cover by uh, Rodriguez. This one by Angel Hernandez. And this one by Casey Collar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. No, what? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I picked this up today. Yesterday. No, I picked it up yesterday at the uh, Toronto Convention Center. Uh, oh, I should mention, I do have a press pass that I got, but I used it this <laughs> weekend. Uh, I was at Toronto Comic Con as press, uh, representing... Transmissions podcast, of course. Um, so I uh, got to interview some people. So look for those uh, uh, coming up. They're being worked on, you know, uh, v- as we speak. And, top men. Yes. And um, I got to interview a couple people. So uh, hopefully you like guys like those interviews. But uh, one of the people I interviewed was Dan Fogler, or uh, Fogler. And uh, he's on uh, Goldberg's. He's on uh, Fantastic Beasts. He, uh, you know, he does those movies. Um, so he's a, a actor, and uh, he was he was the main guy in Balls of Fury, if you remember that movie. Um, but uh, he's also writing his own comics right now too. So um, yeah, so this was it. This is a little trade paperback right now. He's uh, doing those, um, and it's called Brooklyn Gladiator. This is Volume Zero. Uh, it's been it's put out by Chapter House. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to take a look at it. The art's great. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to sitting down and reading it for a bit. Um, you got him to sign it, right? Uh, nope, I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was busy for today. He was real busy. So I didn't. Oh. Um, as far as Transformers go, I picked this up this week before I left. This is a uh, classic star screen, but it's the different color uh, match that I than I had. I have the G1 color uh, of this figure, so I got the other one. I just figured mine that I have is with, with the uh, coronation uh, kit that I got. This one doesn't have it, so I figured I'll pick it up. That's different. Um, I got some stuff signed at uh, at the convention this uh, this weekend. Um, a lot of stuff signed by people that uh, you know you won't, may not know, but the main one that I got signed was uh, Denny O'Neill. So he's a big time writer. So I got him to sign my Batman 241, my Superman 233. Love that cover. It's pretty good. And of course, Green Lan- Arrow, Green Lantern, uh, 85 and 86. So those nice. are all signed by him now as well. I picked up one convention exclusive. This is a a foil variant of the uh, of the Harley Quinn uh, one shot. Shiny, shiny, <laughs> very shiny. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. These are I like these uh, DC, you know, these foil ones. I wish Marvel would do start doing stuff like this. It's so shiny, you can see the reflection of just how bad the new Skype interface is. <laughs> <laughs> And I did get a um, a, con- uh, a commission done. Uh, this one is done by a guy by the name of Dylan Burnett. He was the artist on the Cosmic Ghost Rider series. And I gave him an, uh, an option, and he picked uh, Action Comics 1000, and he wanted to draw 90 Superboy. Awesome. So, yeah. It's pretty he cool. just recently returned. There you go. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, he did a really good job. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. I got a few other things, but they they don't uh, really mean anything for the show, so I don't need to show them off. That's all I got this week, guys. Well, uh, that's all for this week's trips to the store. All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and let's move on to some convention news. All right, um, we have just a little bit of convention news, considering. Everything happened this last weekend, but as per usual, TFCon announced their next date or their next U.S. date at the end of this convention. They will be back in D.C., or more accurately, Reston, Virginia, on October 25th through 27th of this year. So another, like, short, well, I guess not as short, but, you know, seven months, and they'll be back in the States yeah, I'm I'm wondering if we should expect 
uh, just another like September, October time frame going forward. Cause I mean, it seems like the LA thing was just kind of, they were able to get all these people together at the state, but yeah, I mean, I th- the DC area is more doable. I think for a lot of us. Yeah. I think, I think that was, this was just a one-off unless they're going to do two TF cons a year now. Three. Well, two U S ones plus one Canada. You just, yeah. You just discounting me altogether <laughs> now. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You don't count. <laughs> two two TFCon USA's a year. How's that? That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, I, I hope it's a one-off because if they're starting to do two, then I'm likely going to miss both of them every year. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because going to one in July and then one in October is... It asks a lot every year, but then to go... You know, yeah. October, and then all of all of a sudden, I'm back to going with one in 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 March again. It's that's a lot. Plus, all the other conventions yeah, I, I go to every year, I'm never home now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> with, with me doing a convention this weekend, Star Wars Celebration in April, TFCon Toronto is like still it's very iffy. I don't know if that'll happen, but if I you know something in October, that is a lot more likely. So we'll have to see. And Yoshi had a great time uh, there last time. And, you know, it's number one Derek's backyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, across the Atlantic, we have uh, some surprising news from TF Nation. They are announcing the Gundam Wing. I, I see what they did there. Ha uh, ha. Um, they are going to have, um, they're opening up to more robot franchises. Uh, they are. This is with the their help uh, with the help of their friends at Gundam Mad, uh, which uh, in Anime Limited, a Gundam Mad, I believe, is a, a it's a fan group for um, the Gunpla or Gunplay community. I'm not entirely versed on the nomenclature for the Gundam stuff, but you know they have the whole model kits and everything, and the Gundam Wing section of TF Nation is going to have. A huge display of model kits, sales area, um, lots of stuff available to purchase, and some introductory panels for people that are uh, new to the Gundam hobby. So this is you know interesting. I, I've I've always I guess been Gundam curious, but never actually gotten into it. And <laughs> it it just seems like th- this is you know something good. You know you can only go so far with. Just Transformers, this will open them up to a whole nother, you know, fandom. Maybe there'll be some, you know, cross-pollination with people that were only interested in one franchise and not the other. That's really cool. And then it's, you know, no no added cost. If you're in TF Nation, you can go and, you know, check out this area. And that is it for convention news. All right. So, yeah, sure to attract all the Gundam curious people to (laughs) TF Nation. All right, uh, well, let's finish up the show with some feedback. All right, in our Discord chat, we have a uh, a solicitation for advice from Dinobot Maximize. So uh, Dinobot says, as I have never done anything like this before, I wonder if you guys have any advice about working a con, namely hosting a gaming session. I'm hosting a few sessions to introduce the Transformers trading card game to new players and others at my local con in May. So if there is any advice you guys could offer, it would be great. I should mention I already have some starter packs donated from local comic and card shops, so it will help with having some to use to play with with for the sessions. I've sent messages to Wizards of the Coast about it, and they basically said all they could do was point to some promotional images I could print out. Also, my con is May 4th through 5th the day after the release of the Bumblebee vs. Megatron deck. Well, that's convenient. Maybe you can get your hands on that before it starts. But, yeah, I mean, I guess really uh, the only experience I personally have working at a con is when we were selling our uh, Transmissions Till All Are One exclusive cover at TFCon in uh, 2016 in Canada and Chicago. Uh, So... We've also done panels, though. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 
Um, and what, what I would suggest is, one, I would try to get your hands on at least one copy of that B versus Megatron deck to give away as a prize. I mean, maybe even if you could get one of those shops, just donate it. Be clear, I don't know if you would have like a microphone since this is a gaming session, but, you know, just be, be clear, uh, keep all the explanations as simple as you can because these people are likely going to be coming in cold with no no real experience with it or you just have to approach it that way and just if you can get maybe some people from the the card shops to to help with like the playing like maybe if you could get one you know one person at each table that is familiar with it that would probably help the the games go along a little better yeah definitely try to recruit some friends or or anybody to to help you just with with running everything don't try to do everything by yourself uh i think uh, for us you know having the four of us on the podcast has always been helpful when we're when we're all at a convention together we are able to mm-hmm. uh to even to more evenly distribute the workload yeah i mean one thing we did like at the i think it was 2015 or 2016 where we were all there at like one of the podcast panels you know, some of us were up there, but then like Daryl was in the audience with the microphone and it just, it really helped spreading a lot of those um, duties around. So you're not trying to scramble and do everything. Daryl, you have any additional advice? Uh, not really. Um, it's, uh, everything's going to be different than, and get running a gaming session is, is different than what we did. Um, honestly, if my advice to you would be to ask the guys over at WTF at TFW, they are doing exactly mm-hmm. what you're doing. So, you know, they're running gaming sessions. They did it this past weekend at TFCon Los Angeles. Um, I know uh, Aaron and Chris run them at their local stores uh, every f- couple months or so. So, honestly, I think you're asking the wrong people. Uh, I would be sending messages to them. But uh, as far as just running a session in general... um you need to know the game inside and out. You need to be able to answer any question. So, yeah, do your research. Make sure you know what you're doing, you're talking about. Because if you're running it, people are looking to you to be the expert. And I will say, if you're not sure, give your answer as if you are completely sure. Because mm-hmm. they will know. <laughs> I might be giving away too many of secrets of what we do on the show. <laughs> You seem to be implying that we might not be totally sure of what we're doing around here, <laughs> Jeremy. Fake it till you make it has served me well throughout <laughs> my whole life. All right. Well, uh, that's all the feedback we got for this week. So we will call it a day for this episode of Transmissions. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Later. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you again next week. Hello. 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 Your friend Daryl was stuck in Toronto. So you asked me to join you. No, we didn't. so nice. We didn't. Nope. Nope. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) What am I hearing? Playing my Switch. You're playing. A, <laughs> what, are you supposed to be getting ready? <laughs> I am ready. Put the game away, Yoshi. Uh, <laughs> Quit playing with your toy, Yoshi or Charles, Daryl, someone, <laughs> Evangelist. <laughs>